Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah. This is dawah tip number one, how to give dawah to people on the street. Dawah, right? We're thinking about it. What can I do? How can I approach these people? I'm scared. I don't know too much about Islam. What should I do? So, very quick tip. First and foremost, you want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase you in knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you, to open for you the means and ways. If you want to approach strangers and people around you or colleagues and so on, and we'll give you, you know, some tips further down the line. You have to have good manners, good character, and you yourself first and foremost to follow Islam properly. So people can understand, people can see, such as the, the companions in the prison, in the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, when they noticed that he was righteous, so that's why they approached him, and he used that opportunity to actually open the path, the way towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to link it to Allah, that he is like this because of the deen and so on. So go to Surah Yusuf and read that beautiful story uh, and see, take, take some da'wah tips from Surah Yusuf. Next thing is that you should try when you are in some kind of you know, conversation or some kind of position, such as, for example, you might be putting gas in your tank at the gas station, the person might be filling it for you, or you might be at a store, or you might be, uh, they might ask you the time or directions for something. Try to ask them a question. One of the things that I ask, especially if I'm in a country, I see that they're a stranger, I would say, how long have you been in this country for? How do you like, for example, this country, if you're in a Muslim country? They might say, so on, and you know, we just, five years, one year, two years, and many people that I've noticed, that I've interacted to, they've been in you know, these Muslim countries, for example, for many years. So I asked him something very simple. Has anyone ever told you anything about Islam in these five or three years that you've been in this country? Most of the time they say, maybe some people I heard or this or that, or maybe no, sir. And you tell them something very simple, and you say, you know, this is Islam, you explain to them Islam in a minute or two, you know, that it's the concept of monotheism, of one God, the creator of heavens and the earth, that we believe in all the prophets from Adam all the way up to Jesus, including Jesus and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the last and final prophet. That we believe in the Quran and give them the positives of Islam. Don't attack their faith or anything like that. And always carry in your wallet a small business card with some websites or some references that they can go to further or the number of an Islamic center or something, someone they can contact for further information. Okay, so this is for specifically for Muslim countries. For non-Muslim countries, we have more interaction with people. People, if we look like Muslims, they might want to come to us and ask us. I've noticed that if I just, you know, stick to the deen, of course, do my prayers and everything, people will come and ask me, you know, why are you praying? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? The actual opportunity for speaking about Islam, I would say it's quite, you know, more in non-Muslim countries because people tend to come and ask you. People want to know. People want to know what's on the media, you know, if this is true or not. And they will engage you in different kind of things. A lot of times, because of the social context, you know, you might refuse going to the club with them or the bar or drinking. Or, they might ask you why, and this will open for you. So take the opportunity. Don't shy away. Don't shy away from your name. Don't shy away from identity. Take it. Whatever you know, give it. It's very small things. If you don't know, refer them to other people, to the people of knowledge. Have with you always some kind of information to give them a business card or something that they can go in for further knowledge. This is your quick tip from iqra.org. And really fast, I want to tell you about iqra.org, Islamic Center for Research and Academics. It is an academic endeavor to defend Islam, to give people the clear message of Islam, and at the same time to clear those misconceptions in an academic way, those arguments that people are using against Islam. This will help you, especially in the West, when people might research about Islam, might have studied in universities about Islam, and might have many misconceptions about Islam, to be able to answer them. Why did Prophet Muhammad marry Aisha radiallahu anha at such an early age? Why did Prophet Muhammad wage war against certain people? Why there's you know the whole Jewish, Muslim, you know, issues and so on. So these have to be addressed. We have addressed them, alhamdulillah, in amazing ways. We need your support. Please help us. You can do a lot for us. You can donate. There's a donate button on icraa.org. Donate generously and help us buy the equipment that we need to make this professional, buy the resources that we need to make this the best way we can do so we can help the Muslims. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Inshallah, we'll see you on our next tip from iqra.org. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
إن لله عبادا فطنا طلق الدنيا وخاف الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا